Hi, I'm Corey Wolf. I'm an associate professor at New York Institute of Technology. Julia, a 35-year-old Hispanic female, presents reporting that blood work done for a life insurance physical indicated she was pre-diabetic due to her hemoglobin A1C being 5.9%. She hasn't seen a healthcare provider in five years. Julia doesn't understand why this would be since she does not have a family history of diabetes. This patient requires a comprehensive history and physical, which should always include a nutrition assessment. Many PAs do not know what a nutrition assessment entails, but it's easy as the ABCDs. A nutrition assessment entails anthropometric data, biochemical data, clinical assessment, and a diet history. Anthropometric data uses body measurements, including weight, height, calculation of body mass index, and waist circumference. For the general population, a BMI of greater than or equal to 25 kilograms per meter squared is considered overweight. A BMI greater than or equal to 30 kilograms per meter squared is considered obesity. BMI has limitations in assessing adiposity in individuals with increased muscle mass, decreased muscle mass, and for different races. Waist circumference indirectly measures abdominal adipose tissue. All PAs need is a tape measure to obtain this essential data. Central obesity is defined as a waist circumference greater than 40 inches for men and greater than 35 inches for women. That varies with ethnicity. Biochemical parameters are obtained through patient-specific lab tests and include proteins, lipids, glucose, metabolic profile, CBC, and vitamin and mineral levels if appropriate. Clinical assessment includes information on a patient's oral, physical, and cognitive function, their medical history, medication use, signs and symptoms of malnutrition, deficiency, or disease. Diet history includes information on food and beverage consumption, dietary practices, beliefs, and supplement use. A patient's cultural or ethnic background must be considered when obtaining a diet history. Based on Julia's history, we know she exercises once a week by walking briskly for 20 minutes. She has a demanding job with long hours, eats on the go, and late in the evening. She often drinks soda to keep her energized at work. She reports gaining 10 pounds in the past year. She smokes four cigarettes a day. She sleeps seven hours a night, has no medical complaints, and is upset that her blood test indicates that she has prediabetes. Julia's BMI is 28 and her waist circumference is 39 inches. Based on her anthropometric data, Julia is considered overweight, which is ICD-10 diagnosis code E66.3. A high waist circumference is associated with an increased risk for type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and cardiovascular disease in patients with a BMI ranging between 25 and 34.9 kilograms per meter squared. Monitoring changes in waist circumference over time may be helpful in addition to measuring BMI, since it can provide an estimate of increased abdominal fat even in the absence of a change in BMI. Julia has an abdominal wall hernia on exam. BMI is a risk factor for developing abdominal wall hernias. Julia's life insurance blood work indicated that she has prediabetes, just like 88 million others in the United States. This is ICD-10 diagnosis code R73.03. The ranges for hemoglobin A1c are normal, less than 5.7%, prediabetes, 57 to 6.4%, diabetes, greater than or equal to 6.5%. Additional tests for Julia should include a fasting lipid panel, liver function tests, thyroid function tests, and fasting glucose. Julia and her PA decide to follow up in a week to review the additional blood tests and create a comprehensive plan.